Hello everyone! Today we have a very special pony. Well, special to me. <laughs> and I really like it when you tell me that a pony I restored was the same one you had as a child or your sister or your mom, which makes me feel old. <laughs> well, this is my pony. Not the exact same my grandma gifted me when I was five, but the one I could finally get after mine was lost a long, long time ago. And I want to thank Fabian for finding it for me because it had been years that I had been searching for this pony. And something we should know before we start is that this wasn't a very successful restoration. I made mistakes again, <laughs> but I want to share them with you so you don't make the same ones. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is remove the head, which was quite easy, luckily. And now it's time to remove the hair. And already as I'm doing this, I can see that there are even more spots that uh, I thought in the beginning. And this will prove to be very, very tough. Unfortunately, because as you might know, I live in the UK and it's winter. We don't really have much sun and there are some marks and spots that are very easy to remove with very strong sunlight. For example, if you live in Argentina, which is where this pony comes from, like me. <laughs> so this will end up being quite a challenging restoration, but let's start with the positive and it's this part, because we had a very rusty tail washer and luckily that's something we can change. And of course, as usual, the first thing we're going to do is wash the pony thoroughly using hot water and soap. And after the pony has been soaking for a while, uh, it becomes easier to remove the rest of the hair. Continuing with our usual next step, I'm going to use uh, hydrogen peroxide on the pony and expose it to UV light for uh, a few days. Normally this works really well, um, the peroxide kind of um, breaks down any biological materials like fungi or mold, but in this case these marks are... I'm, I'm actually not sure what they are and as you will see, spoiler alert, it's not going to work very well, <laughs> but let's do it anyway. Ta-da! <laughs> the color is much better, it's brighter, it's more intense, the marks are also brighter, more intense. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we'll see what we do with this. Let's uh, start by filling in these little holes. And my idea was to use milliput to fill them in and then paint them with acrylic paint. The first thing that I wanted to try and I thought could be a good idea was to mix some of the acrylic with the actual milliput to give it a color closer to the pony's color. But as you can already see, um, for some reason the pigment didn't really stick with the millipot and the, the paint just broke away and stuck to my gloves and <laughs> to the paper instead of staying with the paste. So I didn't actually want to give it a second chance, I just used it like this. And I think it might have to do with the neon colors because I always use this brand and it always works really well, has really good coverage. But in this case, the neon, I could never get a proper consistency in any brand. Thank you. 
Okay, now it's time to paint the white areas. And a couple of weeks ago I showed you a rusty pony and explained why I wanted to leave some of the marks. This week I want to show you what you can do if you want to cover them. However, I will tell you now, <laughs> this didn't work. The vinyl and the acrylic paint have very different textures and not only does this shade have also quite a unique saturation, but it's also not even on the pony's body. So, for example, the color you use on the leg might not work for the neck and vice versa. So I started by mixing the fuchsia color, which is quite neon and will turn out to be a problem, with a cream color to bring down some of the saturation. And as usual, I'm going to do many very thin layers. And this is where the big problems started and then they never ended. <laughs> and the biggest one, I think, in this case was overpainting. I was trying to cover as much of the surface around the, the millipad as I could, so it wouldn't be like an obvious transition. But because the texture is so different with the paint, as you will see later, the result wasn't very good. And I redid this step at least five times. I have actually been working on this pony for almost two weeks and I just couldn't fix it. I'm not going to lie. The, I'm not happy at all with the way it looks. You know, it's interesting how sometimes you're really, really enthusiastic about something and it's a really important thing and you just can't make it work. <laughs> and it's been a tough month after a tough couple of years and I have been waiting for this pony for so long. So it's, it's quite disappointing that I didn't get the result I wanted. But I try to see it as a learning process. And one of the big advantages of restoring toys and ponies in particular is that you can always revert your work. So it's just with acetone, you can take all the paint off and start again, which is what I did many times. But actually this is the result that I liked the most in the end. So I'm showing you where I ended my first process. So just to make it clear, I usually prefer to leave the marks on the pony, um, the ones that can be removed with peroxide, but as I said, I wanted to show you what happens if you paint on them. <laughs> so you have both options. And this is the result of the repaint. The different areas of the pony have different types of decoloration, so it doesn't work too well. But if you have a different shade and if it's a little more even, then you should get a good result by doing multiple layers, multiple thin layers. So let's move on to a more familiar <laughs> area, the re-hair. And this masquerade, because it's an Argentinian variant, it looks very different from the Hong Kong, uh, Europe and US version. And it has rainbow hair. And I'm going to be using nylon hair in three shades and my rerouting needle. For rainbow ponies, always remember to mix the two colors when you're transitioning from one to the other. I mean, if you want to do them like Hasbro did them. <laughs> if you're doing a custom, then do whatever you want. For rehairing the tail of this rainbow pony, I'm going to tie little groups of colors using thread so the hairs don't get all mixed up when I put the tail back in the pony. Thank you. 
tying the colors together I think works quite well uh, to keep them separate however it does double the colors so if you have any uh, tips for how to make the how to say the two strands of the same color um, appear together in the tail I would love to know so please if you do uh, feel free to share it with me <laughs> So my plan was to do the curls using the perm rollers like I usually do and the second, third, I don't know which problem I encounter at this point is that um, because it's quite cold lately the heating was higher than usual and the curls will end up being very very tight. But anyway, this is how I normally do it, I just wrap the hair around the perm curlers and add some tissue paper so it keeps the shape of the, the tip of the hair. I'm actually not sure if it's best to make the curls using different colors or using the same color. I would think maybe uh, more curlers keeping the same color, but I mixed it up and that made it even worse. So you're done with the curls, just pour some boiling water and let it dry for a couple of days. And if you don't want them to be too um, tight, then you can just use hot water or let it dry for less days. Next, I'm going to just do some quick retouches to the eyes because the paint is missing in some parts. And because by this point I had already seen the results of my curling efforts, I uh, went to the craft shop and I bought this nice ribbon because uh, my little pony used to come with ribbons and this way it might distract from the mess of the hair. <laughs> And this is the result after my first attempt <laughs> and if you want to see more of them just stick to the end of the video and you will see other things I tried like pastels and more acrylics and different things that didn't work out but anyway I hope you still managed to enjoy this video <laughs> and learn from my mistakes and consider that sometimes it's not uh, helpful or healthy to continue with the project at least uh, when you're not feeling too well and also that it takes time to develop skills and that it's okay to fail <laughs> so i will see you in the next one hopefully with a bit more success and have a good week